I'm Kat. I'm Arden13. Welcome to our show, World Tiger. Building Dragon. Today we are welcoming back our special guest, Tyler. How's it going, Tyler? Welcome back. Awesome. It's so great to be back. I'm so happy to have you back. So last time we neglected to really get a blurb about Adula. Obviously mm -hmm. you talked about Adula when talking about the Prime. Yep. But could you give us a little bit more, more for the folks at home to kind of introduce them to Adula? Yeah. So Adula is a world built around the crux of a caste system where there are magical capable people and not magical capable people um, and that is born through bloodlines and it's a dominant trait and all of that and what it comes down to is that the Lord Emperor who is a beholder <laughs> is oppressing those that don't have the magical abilities along with those magical capable people and I built this world to be an uprising world to play a 5e campaign where the characters get to be in the room where it happens as uh, the world is changed and everything like that so it's a pretty cool world um, and I'm super excited to run it can confirm that it is a pretty cool world Kat and I have recently had our first session in Adula mm -hmm. and it very much has such a diverse plethora of like things going on right. and cultures and oh it's so it's it's very <laughs> fun to be involved in a game like this. No, awesome. I'm so happy. Uh, but for us, for our movements here, um, you guys all know why we're here. We're still knocking out the summer camp program, uh, hitting out those 33 prompts all throughout the month of July. Um, Summer Camp is a program that was set up by the World Anvil team to promote world building as well as the community that is ever growing mm -hmm. in general. They've also got some really affordable and, and incredible subscription options, so you can definitely go check those out as well. And when you are a higher level subscriber like I am, you can actually allow people to follow your worlds and your campaigns from the outside. So it's great if you're a streamer, but also for me, who's not streaming yet, hopefully soon, <laughs> um, you can actually follow along with Kat and Arden, see how their characters are doing, and then see how they shape the world. It's really awesome. It's mm -hmm. a whole lot of fun, and mm -hmm. we will have a link to Adula in the description below, so please feel free to hit that back and follow Tyler and follow us if you want to see <laughs> how, we, how, we, how we deal with a campaign. <laughs> um, it's going to be super fun. Mm -hmm. But without further ado, I think we're ready to get to the prompt. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do it. Cat. What is our prompt? Today we get to write about a technology from a history in our world and if it's lost or still in our world. Mm. Interesting. Technology is one of those things where it can be anything from as small as just like a sharpened rock to <laughs> like something huge and crazy. So now my brain is just... I feel like we've had a number of run-ins with this, like, or at least like have yep. had cusps of talking about right. stuff like this in our previous prompts. This this one ought to be interesting. I'm yeah. kind of interested. I'm interested. I don't know if I'm gonna go wholeheartedly I know. <laughs> into one thing or another. I'm interested to we'll see what comes out, out of a doula, so. Yeah, I mean, the dunes, which is where the gnomes are from, are known for their technology. They actually oh, yeah. pride themselves on their technology mm -hmm. and the creators of those technologies. So, um, Kat's character is gonna get some possible spoilers or some possible awesome new things that she can do based on the technology I write today. Mm -hmm. Meta knowledge. This will be a practice and an exercise yes. in player versus DM meta knowledge. <laughs> we'll Don't metagame. <laughs> but for all of us here, let's quickly re go through the rules. We each have 30 minutes to answer the prompt. Each of our submissions have to be at minimum 300 words. After the 300 words and our 30 minutes are up, the three of us will come back together and share what we came up with. Some of our best ideas come from collaborations. But they have. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's do it. Time skip! It. And we're back. We're back. Yeah. How did we feel about this one? Uh, it's easy for me because technology is a part of my world because there's mm -hmm. so little magic. Technology is pretty easy to write about. Um, so not super hard for me. Sure. sure. I, I found this one a little difficult because this isn't something that I really... Technology isn't really a thing in my world. And mm -hmm. if it is, it's very like... medieval -ish. Very medieval. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's not too much like incredible vast technology to be seen, but mm -hmm. I noticed in the prompt it said something about history and maybe if it isn't used anymore, so I kind of went with that route and just took the easy way out and was like, ah, it was in the old age. It got wiped out a long time ago, <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> well, I mean, you're in a class with many amazing writers who obviously, it's like the whole story is about them rediscovering things that they've right. forgotten, so right. it's a very easy trope to fall into. Just to be like, yeah, it 
was a while. Yeah, it, it, it happened a long moment. time ago. Nobody knows how to do it anymore. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Damascus steel or Damascus. Whatever. Yeah, whatever it may oh, be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I kind of felt you? the same way. I know, Tyler, at one point you mentioned, like, technology could be really anything from stringing a longbow mm-hmm. to a cell phone. And I was yep. like, you're right. That's a very broad topic. I still don't know what I'm going to write about. Yeah. So. Well, and some people even consider martial arts or different things like that a technology because it's something that's a guarded secret and somebody created it, you know, mm-hmm. so if you really wanted to broaden the term, mm-hmm. you could definitely go into something like that as well. Sure, sure, sure. So who would like to go first? Uh, I can start us off, Let's um, it. since it was easier for me. So mine was something well, that... we finish with you see the strong finish. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, so mine is something that I mentioned to you guys in our first session, is something that existed, but I had not put pen to paper yet to uh, name it or fully flush it out. So mine is called Alpos Boards. Um, and Alpos, per the naming conventions in my world with gnomes, is named after its discoverer, Alport. Alpos Kellen, who was a gnome who created this, um, and the way it was discovered, which is, I mentioned last time I was on, I really like those prompts, those little bits down at the mm-hmm. end. Yeah. Yeah. So discovery was one, and I was like, let's make this fun, because I love where it's like, uh, well, penicillin came around from we were trying to do this, or Viagra is the great one, where it's like they were trying, it was a heart medicine to start, and then they realized other things were happening, and it became <laughs> a completely different drug. So sure, sure, sure. I like those types of things, so I did it in this case, and in this case, Alpos was trying to create a way that he could do two sets of notes at once. When he was taking his notes on his inventions, he wanted to have basically another one going at the side so he could have duplicate copies. Sure. Uh, the carbon nice. copy as we would see in, in the modern era. So he, he created this and he discovered that it could be used for long distance sending because he gave away one of the stone tablets that he was using to a friend who, when they came home, opened up the tablet and realized there was writing showing up on it that was some illicit writing because um, Alpos was writing a letter to his mistress at the time, and that all everything he was writing was showing up on this other tablet that was across town. But he assumed it wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, he called your friend, dude, 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 stop, stop, stop. stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it was. So that made him realize that this could be something. So it was refined down from stone tablets, where he was writing so heavily that it was scratching into the stone, uh, to chalkboards. And now they are used similar to sending stones in 5e, mm-hmm. except for they are chalkboards around the world and each one has a pair so they're created in a pair and then you give you know you two would have one would have one and the other would have it you'd write down something on it it appears on the other one you can erase it write it the next thing whatever it may be so they are alpus boards nice i like that a lot i love the story <laughs> you added with it too i yeah. love those i i love the little details of yep. adding in like a story as to why well, and, and Adding a little humor to it, Great I guess. inventions that happen. There's always something about it. There's always mm-hmm. some story of how it happened. They are very rarely boring, you know, things that happen. So I thought, you know, that what is something a gnome would want to do that would be close to this, and how could it happen? So, yeah, and, and it is now a part of the world, but really it's kind of controlled by that 1% to 2% of people. You know, rulers got them right away because they wanted to be able to send missives to each other of mm-hmm. what was going on, and then it became kind of... Um, you know, in vogue to have one if you were in power or you were rich enough to afford one, so you'd get one and send one to your mistress or whatever it would be. But, oh, <laughs> but yeah, it, so it became a thing, but it's still not huge in the world. So mm-hmm. I like little things like that, especially in a 5e campaign, because it's always so hard when you're like, especially like we divided the group up in session one. Right. How are you going to talk to each other? Well, maybe this is a way you could talk to each other. Mm-hmm. But it's not so ubiquitous that it's just, it just wipes away the distance and makes it not matter anymore. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that, that's kind of where that sits. Mm-hmm. I also really like, I know Kat does this all the time, where if she, st- if she can't really find uh, a solid like lead in mm-hmm. how to write it with all the other prompts she starts to write a little story like yep. the discovery about how it was discovered or yep. what have you just some sort of a reference to go off of and that's absolutely hysterical because the <laughs> amount of times that I lose sleep thinking how did this how did we create this yep. where was the demand for this particular thing yep. Yep. and where did it come from so I really yep. like the Excuse me, the, the history that you gave in yeah. that really... Well, the uh, another one I always like is the upside-down writing pen with NASA, obviously. It's another one of those technologies that has a funny story around it because, you know, NASA spent all this money to write get a pen that could write in space because you need no pressure. And, well, the cosmonauts just sent up pencils. Like, right. <laughs> so it was like, why did you spend all this time on this thing that could have been solved? 
Because it's awesome. Well, and obviously a pen is better for certain situations and things, mm -hmm. but it was, I love those kind of stories that go into inventions. So of course, one of the most important inventions in my world is going to have some kind of story like that. And you guys know I like humor and I like being funny. So having it be a letter written to his mistress that was discovered is just <laughs> funny to me. I can't wait to read the article about yes. him. In the actual letter of like where it's cut off and the little doodles he was drawing in the margin that oh, were showing no. up. Because well. that's the other thing is you could... Rather than it being sending stones where it's, you know, limited to the number of words you can use and it's only words, you could draw out battle plans on these boards and send it to someone if you want to do this. Because it's it's a one-to-one -one board. Um, it can be used for a lot more things than just what it commonly is used for, which is sending messages. Mm -hmm. Sure. Now, my question for you is, and this might be me asking questions because I'm in the game. Mm -hmm. Is there a way, because they're made in pairs, mm -hmm. is there a way to hijack that feed? That would be something that only certain people would know. It would probably take a gnome of a certain stature, uh, pun intended, to <laughs> possibly um, <laughs> hack the system and make that happen. But it's possible that... Mm -hmm. that a, if, but you would need to know beforehand, because another thing that happens in this world is the gnomes are the only ones that can actually imbue magic into items. As I said, it's a very low magic world, not everyone has it, um, and items, the, the study of wizardry is not there that you can just sit down and study it. So somehow the gnomes have figured out a way to put magic into things. Some of them are like batteries where they run out of charge and you have to have a gnome recharge it for you, and then some of them, like the Alpha Sports, just last forever and nobody knows how. But people don't really ask questions because it's great technology mm -hmm. and it's available and so you would have to be in with the gnomes and be there when it was created most likely to intercept this in the way that they're set up. Nice. So, yes, but yes, of course, your character would think of that as a way to possibly <laughs> <laughs> get a third in the pair to... <laughs> well, uh, well, my kid, I, I won't talk about my character. That's, that's a discussion we will have off camera. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's, again, it's something that I knew I wanted to exist in my world. I feel like there's those check boxes you have to have in your world of, is it going to have this? Is it going to have this? I had the communication needed to be, there was a hole there, how is it going to be? And this fills that hole of how mm -hmm. communication happens. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I like those a lot. It's really <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, what did you have this time, Kat? Yeah, so this time I came up with, like I said kind of at the beginning, I couldn't really come up with a technology that would... Nothing came immediately to my head when I started talking, thinking about the Atrum, so I went with um, something from the old age, which is before this great flood mm -hmm. came to the Atrum. Um, this time where gods and mortals walked among each other, and in essence, um, the gods used to actually sit in their, they're called godstone temples on Viatrum. But because there was so much divine energy and divine power sitting on these areas around the Theatrum, um, that divine energy kind of began to seep into the planet. Oh. So, um, this kind of combination of mythical and earthly properties created something called the Source. And so it's source magic. is kind of the technology I came up with. Um, hmm. It is mostly used by, in 5e, it would be your bards, your sorcerers, your druids, anyone that's not necessarily using magic from a higher power, mm -hmm. per se, mm -hmm. that's where they're getting this magic from. Drawing from the natural. Right, powers. right, right. And so, um, with this in the old age, it was, source magic was just seen, magic in general was seen everywhere. You know, whether yep. it came from the gods or using the source magic, it was almost seen as like, this is a gift from the gods. So they still, even though it wasn't necessarily divine magic, they still took it as a gift from the gods. I see. Um, everybody used it. I mean, like children would light their rooms with dancing lights at night, food and water was everywhere. This was like the best time ever. <laughs> um, and then things got a little wet. So, um, <laughs> and then things just kind of went away. So. Um, after the surge, though, these temples that the gods used to hang out in kind of got abandoned, um, and so, but the source magic is still sitting there. It, does, it doesn't, like, dissipate. It, it's still sitting there. It's still thriving on Theatrum. Um, there are very few that actually have the talent or the curse of using this magic. Um, like I mentioned, druids, sorcerers, bards, anyone that's not getting that directly divine magic. In this newer era of Theatrum, magic that isn't coming directly from the gods is seen as a big no-no. It's not really okay. cool. Um, fully illegal or just frowned not, upon? Not fully illegal, no. Okay. Maybe in some certain cities, but it's it's mostly just like 
you're not getting it directly from a god, are you getting it from a demon? Is this mm. is this what you're doing here? Um, or if they're not um, part of the world, there's a section of the world that really focuses on um, the study of knowledge and things like that. So mm -hmm. wizards are really appreciated there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so wizards are really appreciated there because it is like you are using your knowledge to learn magic. So mm -hmm. that's, it's still not divine magic, but it, that's okay. Okay. Um, because you are pursuing truth. And because you're pursuing <laughs> truth in your knowledge, but yes. So I'm gonna open up! <laughs> they came back, I tried to avoid them. <laughs> it's, I think they are my favorites now that I'm talking about them so much. But either way, um, it's pretty complicated magic. Um, I mean, only those with a natural gift can really use it. Okay. Um, I'm trying to go through all the different categories that so they had here. So one thing that's always interesting with me in magic-based worlds and don't ask me about a doula because I haven't decided yet. But <laughs> um, is it is it one of those that's like a battery that's slowly running out the magic since the gods aren't there, or is it still always being refreshed and it's always full? And... I think that it is still full because mm -hmm. it wasn't necessarily after a while after the divine power got actually settled into theatrum and it started mm -hmm. working those different different energies i guess it became a thing all on its own okay so it's not dependent on any one thing it's just cool. its own its own life force awesome um but yeah i think that the only other thing i put on here is that in the current era um like i said magic without divine power not really a big thing however bards and and sorcerers that are closer to these forgotten that's the other thing is not a lot of no one knows where these godstone temples are people don't really know about them in the new era so when you again wet probably right 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 yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh through the damn yeah. uh <laughs> but after that they they will notice that their power kind of increases in certain parts of the world mm. they're like hey that's kind of cool so you'll definitely have more sorcerers or more druids in certain areas of the world Let's just see. because it's like my power's a little stronger here Might as and well bards just... don't perform in certain cities because they just don't sound as good Maybe. Like, <laughs> for sure but um yeah so I don't know. I like it. I'm probably need to develop this a little bit more. This was another one of those where I was just like, and source magic. Sure, here we go. Like this is what we're coming up with today. No, it's definitely um, cool. But that's all I got. I like what about you? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's all I had. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, I've talked about this before on the show, but when we talked about it, it was more or less a sacred material. And how did it influence the world? Mm -hmm. um, charter magic. I brought mm. back charter magic. Oh yeah, I took heavy inspiration from mine, just being like charter magic. I was like, I know what he might write about. I'm just gonna. <laughs> I, I felt a little bit of it, a, a little bit of just a bit inspiration. Magic. Inspiration there. <laughs> um, so I still not have not figured out charter magic yet. <laughs> still have not figured out all of the exact nuancey things about it. Uh, okay. We wrote about it in the material article type. Um, because it is a material here, I kind of expounded upon it as a technology, as a full-blown thing. So I'm pretty sure I can go back into the Charter Magic material and connect it directly to this article itself. Mm -hmm. um, as a parent article, necessarily. Okay. Uh, to this one being the parent article, the technology. Um, just to kind of refresher, Charter Magic is this ancient form of technology slash magic that people in the modern era don't really understand. Yep. Um, it was very prevalent in the third era which is also referred to as the age of charter magic um and what i have struggled with specifically is uh the difference between charter magic and enchantment magic because in a lot of the campaigns that i would run if i didn't have an in-game reason for a certain item existing i mm -hmm. just say it's charter magic okay and it's like that's all well and good but now that i'm thinking about it more that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense and it takes the the idea of enchantment completely out of it yeah so i want to kind of build that greater dissonance and that greater diversity between the two so charter magic as a technology is still lost spoiler alert <laughs> still lost people don't know how to use it and the the thing that cut it off was that there are these ley lines that course through the entirety of elacrid um and they intersect at certain points called source forges okay um However, at one point, excuse me, the, not the source forges, but the ley lines themselves were cut 
in some way. And they kind of work like I still cannot for the life of me remember the name of that circuit that when you cut one of them, the entire system goes down. Yeah, would it be a closed circuit, I think? Might be a... Might I can't be a, remember. Yeah, I, can't I know remember what you're either. talking about. Yeah, but when one of them gets cut, the entire Old system... Christmas lights, basically. <laughs> Old Christmas lights. When Absolutely. one goes out, you When one go goes out, the entire system is get, gone. Yep, yep. Um, so <laughs> that kind of threw everything into turmoil when it came to the fourth era. However, what Charter Magic is as a technology is... Um, at different various points of so at various source forges, they okay. could harvest this material. They could craft it into various different things, mm -hmm. um, and kind of the way that I went about that and how I'm starting to really di distinctify that is if it is a sword that has like a flame tongue that has flame powers, mm -hmm. that is an enchantment that has been put on that sword. Okay, but certain things like. Uh, there's one item in 5e, like the collapsible boat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That would be something that is charter magic oriented because okay. it is a, it can be condensed, it can be consolidated, but it has a, it serves a specific purpose. So and time lord magic is always charter magic in your world if it can yes. be bigger on the inside. If or it's whatever. bigger on the inside, that would be <laughs> charter magic, yeah. absolutely. Um, I did expand upon um, a little bit here. I mentioned how in the city of Joffer, which is a free city that Cat mm -hmm. has some very close ties to mm -hmm. in the game, um, they have not been able to replicate Charter Magic, but they have been able to sort of replicate it in a in a way that is good enough. Mm -hmm. So where they have Joffer is a big port city; it's one of the biggest port cities in the world. But they have started producing in recent years. They have started producing airships mm. using residual Charter Magic that they've been able to kind of ghetto rig together mm -hmm. to make it actually function so they have airships um and is this charter magic that they found that y they think used to serve that purpose and they're just repurposing mm -hmm. it or was it did they take a collapsible ship and turn it into a airship type of thing so i would argue that they found some charter magic that was um charter magic works in a system that's another thing that i've been mm. considering it's it is kind of like a circuit where it serves a certain purpose I th the, my, the idea that keeps coming to mind is a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. When you rev the motor on the chainsaw, the entire mechanism is built to make the yep. the blade rotate. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the same way with Charter Magic. It is built to, sp to serve a specific purpose. It mm -hmm. was designed to fit a specific purpose when it is created. So they found some Charter Magic that basically allowed them to levitate. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, cool. Let's put that on a ship. Okay. <laughs> Let's put that on a boat and see what happens. Um, and there's a bunch of, you know, ballistics and cal calibrations that I'm not going to go into the details in here, mm -hmm. but that's kind of how things worked with Charter Magic, or how it has been adapted in the modern era, so, because people don't know how to harvest it, they don't know where mm -hmm. to harvest it, um, that knowledge has more or less been lost. Um, the only people that have any idea is the scholars of Charter Magic in the free city of Carthos, who have an entire vault of charter magic that they have just harvested from across the world that they've so just these collected. are mystical items that they've, they've yes yeah. okay. they're sitting on a vault of mystical items potentially nukes that they don't know how they oh, work i love those types they're of things. literally <laughs> just sitting on them going they're just they're studying them going well i think I judging think from this, this rune and the way that this line connects <laughs> right. here that it serves this purpose but that is neither here nor there they can't really figure it out um so as a t I don't want to repeat myself too terribly much, but as a technology, Charter Magic is so diverse and so versatile um, that it really can serve a whole lot of purposes. It's just not enchantment magic because you can't just carve a rune into something mm -hmm. yep. and, and it does it, a thing. And it does right. a thing, yeah. Um, it's very specific. It's built in a very specific way. I also... Um, one of the things I was happy that I was able to figure out in mm -hmm. the writing of this is the conductible materials mm -hmm. the best materials to use for charter magic um i did i think i didn't write about that in complexity maybe utility e yeah something like that um metals we got steel adamantine and platinum okay mm -hmm. which nobody knows how to make platinum anymore <laughs> okay <laughs> um so that's just something that's mm -hmm. an adamantine is already so scarce mm -hmm. that's just difficult and then in terms of fabrics um 
Silk is incredibly conductive of charter magic, as well as dragon hide scale, mm -hmm. and um, kind of like a it's not a nylon fabric. Uh, fey, I'm sorry, fey wood fibers. Mm, okay. So Ooh. taking the like the fey wood and stripping it down to the fibers and mm -hmm. weaving clothes out mm -hmm. of that. So cool. So you look at this magic more. It functions more like a science than it does like a magic. Yes. In a, in a way. Yes. Interesting. I, like I that. had completely forgotten about these source forges, and so I was like, "Oh yes, the source. I am a genius." <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> too much collaboration. Too, much, too much collaboration. Too much collaboration. <laughs> well, I will let you in on this, and it's kind of it's it's totally fine. Um, it's not necessarily spoilery because I haven't made it canon yet. Mm -hmm. But when I look at Elacrid, and I'm starting mm -hmm. to go back through the timeline and try to recreate events or try to make things make more sense in my mm -hmm. head in terms of a order of events. And when I look at the Third Age and the two ages after it, the Third Age is supposed to be like this height of civilization. They Charter magic is like booming. It's mm -hmm. a huge, thriving thing. People are able to talk, basically FaceTime each other with certain pieces of Charter mm -hmm. magic. Um, and travel great distances very quickly and do all sorts of great things and then all of a sudden all of that gets cut off mm -hmm. so my thinking is is that the fourth age is like post-apocalyptic <laughs> where they're trying to like crawl back from the brink of yep. this this calamity that befell them mm -hmm. and nobody really knows what happened or how to fix it and so in the fifth era we've kind of run into this well charter magic was a thing it's no longer a thing, and we really don't know what it was enough to justify going back, going back to, it. to it. Yeah. Well, and that's something that's been used by many amazing writers, you know, from you know, Martin doing everything that Valeria knew that no longer exists, and some people interpret it as they were scientific, or some people interpret it as dragon magic that's been lost, and then even in real history with Damascus Steel, that's something that we have stuff better than that now, but at the time, nobody had anything better, and mm -hmm. it was a we technology, technology lost to time. Like, So it's happened in the real world, it's happened in many awesome worlds that are built, and I, I like that idea, but I always go back to the idea of like ancient people, the reason they talked about titans and dragons and stuff like that is because they were finding dinosaur bones, and they had to make an explanation of, well, this femur looks like that dude's femur that died last week, but it's three times as big. So yeah. people that are three times as big. That's the logical thing. So yeah. this charter magic, it could be more based in science or electricity or something. Or, you know, I have some magics that are maybe close to that as well that have been forgotten. And it's really science and people who are non-scientific trying to explain it mm -hmm. without, without the knowledge, the base of knowledge they mm -hmm. need to, to truly understand it. Absolutely. Or just steal what Gygax did, which is make space aliens land and then magic <laughs> and then just try <laughs> that's another thing because in, in history we know, we understand um, a lot of things that people do not uh, did not understand they referred to as magic or mm -hmm. black magic or, yep, or witchcraft or right. whatever it yeah, be. yeah. Or paganism or whatever yep. <laughs> and it's like that's also an idea, a route that I have considered for Charter Magic, but mm -hmm. I haven't sold myself on it yeah. yet. You have to find that that hook that makes sense to you, obviously. Mm -hmm. Where I, I really like the idea of science existing and then it disappearing for whatever reason. It's, I've put it in many things that I've done before. And then I like to think, okay, if they found an iPhone, what would a Neanderthal man think an iPhone was when he found it? He'd probably just think it was a shiny rock, but <laughs> the explanations of what it does right. and all of that, like how would they do it, and especially when they're missing things. A great example is, I think we talked about this the other day, about New Vegas. They they call him, instead of, he thinks he's the Caesar, but he doesn't know how it's actually said, so they all pronounce it differently and things like that. <laughs> the, the things he pulls from are not accurate or fully accurate, and so there's this whole society based on an ancient society, but because they only have 50% of the knowledge, it's, it's wrong. And, it, right. and it's, I think it allows for a lot of humor, like they do in New Vegas, and it allows for a lot of discovery by your players or your readers mm -hmm. as they go through, and they're like, there's something more to this charter magic mm -hmm. than what we thought. Absolutely. Well, that's like all it. I got. I, yeah, like I like both of yours. Those yeah. were awesome. Well, I'm excited to hear more about your boards. <laughs> you can get me one if of those. Can, if you can get your hands on yeah. them. Get me one of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be great now for the North and South group to be able to talk to each other. Because oh, that's boy. what, you guys just kind of split up. And I was mm -hmm. like, they didn't set where they were going to meet back. 
<laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. But yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got. Awesome. Good. Thank you so much for joining us today, Tyler. It's awesome to hear more about a doula. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to have you back. And thank you guys at home for joining us today. Let us know in the comments below something you enjoyed about today's video, or if you have an idea that you're willing to share. If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to hit all those buttons that everyone else bugs you about. We'd love for you to join our lunch table. Or go check out World Anvil if you're interested. <laughs> I'm Kat. I'm Hard13. I'm still waiting on that ramen. And I'm Tyler. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.